Okay, I'm going to show you how I have been using artboards and smart objects to make the production of my Athlete of the Week graphics go way faster. So you can see here are my graphics, uh, men's and women's, there's five of each. Uh, for this video, we'll just ignore these little ones down here, those are slightly different. Um, but so we've got these four different versions of each of them, just with different aspect ratios. Um, there's men's and women's and uh, vertical here. This is 16 by 9 vertical that we use on Instagram stories, 16 by 9 horizontal that we use on Twitter and our uh, digital displays in the building, a uh, square one that can be used on Instagram, and uh, a print version uh, that's basically sized to, uh, that we can print out in an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper uh, here in the office. So, um, to make these super quick, we're using smart objects. And so let's take a look at a, an example of a smart object. So um, we're looking at this logo right here, uh, presented by the Grand Hotel. And this is a smart object. And if I go in and edit that, there it is. Let's, for example, let's bring our opacity up to 100, so that's solid now. If I save that, when I go back in, you'll see now that that has been updated in all of the places it's used. So we'll go back in, undo what we did, resave it, and now it's back to normal. So that enables you to quickly uh, make changes that are reflected throughout all the designs. And so that is an example. I use that in all of them. I have uh, these corner logos. You can see there's a left corner and a right corner, so I can switch them if I want. Um, and basically, there it is, and I can uh, make that. There's an example. I'll get rid of that and save it. And you come back, and you know, see now none of them have that. And so I'll add that shadow back in, save it, and now the shadow's back. So real quickly, it lets you edit. Uh, make a, a single edit that gets reflected in all. So if I'm going to um, update my graphics, the first thing I'll start with is the name. And I call it lower third. And so I'll come in here and let's say, okay, this week, instead of Keith Carlson, it's Austin Davis. And close that and save it. And boom, Austin Davis right across the board. It's updated just like that. Then we'll come in and we'll, I'll edit the photo. And so let's find a picture of Austin Davis I can use. There's one. And you can see I've, I've, I've kind of got these guides to let me uh, approximate where it'll be used. And we'll save that. Close it. And now you can see it's updated in all of them. And what I will normally do is go through each of them and just kind of fine tune where it's located. Just go through each one. I can just kind of move it around a little bit so that it's in the perfect spot. Boom, just like that. And then uh, I just save it and we're good to go. So let's, what I'll do is. I'll pull this over here, and so you can see there's my uh, Keith Carlson. There he is. So if I come and file exports, it's PNG, select that folder, come back in here, and boom, just like that, they're all updated, and I can go ahead and use them. So it's super quick way that you can get your uh, get graphics out that are, are of, of, of multiple dimensions and uh, edit them quickly and export them and um, it doesn't take much time. Uh, and it, the other thing it does is it it prevents um, some errors. Uh, one of the reasons I went this route was I was uh, making a couple typos when I would open up a, a vertical version and type in Austin Davis and open up the horizontal and type in Austin Davis and so on and so forth. This way I type it in once, I get it correct, and it matches throughout all the all the graphics. So uh, simple way and I hope that helped.